Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. I get asked over and over and over again, Linus, what's a good gaming monitor? How do I choose a good gaming monitor? One of the most important factors to consider, especially for Twitch FPS gaming, is the response time. So with that out of the way, I'd like to introduce the RL2455HM from BenQ. This monitor boasts a less than one millisecond response time, that is the gray to gray time for the pixels to switch. It has their black EQ, which is pretty much a way of boosting up the detail in dark areas, which is important particularly for RTS or even FPS games, seeing guys crouched in the shadows and all that good stuff. It also has their smart scaler and display mode feature, which allows you to emulate different sizes of monitors on this monitor so you can say oh well I'm going to a tournament where they're gonna have 19 inch 4x3 monitors so you can actually change the image and resolution to match that particular setting and last but not least it has a multitude of inputs DVI two HDMI inputs so that you can easily switch between your PC and even a couple of different game consoles that are all hooked up to it and it has built-in 2 watt speakers so you can even hear a sound source from those HDMI devices so why does Linus have one of those old tube style CRT monitors on the table? This is just for educational purposes only. CRT monitors don't have a response time spec and the reason for that is that they didn't need one. When you made a motion with a mouse or when something happened on the screen, it would be there because CRTs refresh pretty much instantly. There's no blur in between one frame and another one because they actually blast an image at the screen that then goes away. Whereas an LCD puts an image on the screen and leaves it there until it changes. So while either of these monitors is going to refresh the image 60 times per second, so at a refresh rate of 60 hertz, the CRT has a crisp image, whereas an LCD inherently might have a bit of a blurry image if the pixels aren't able to switch from color to color fast enough. So that is where monitors like this come into play. Rated at a one millisecond response time and actually getting NLG certification as a gaming grade LCD monitor, this one right here attempts to say, okay, we're gonna get as close to CRT as possible in terms of the time it takes to switch those pixels so you get as crisp an image as possible no matter how much you're moving. Now, this isn't quite BenQ's flagship gaming monitor. You could pick up a 2420 series monitor, which not only has very low response times, but it is also 120 hertz. So there's a few different things that affect how long it takes for an action to be reflected on the screen. Number one is input lag, and we're mostly away from that with the high-end electronics that are in any premium gaming monitor these days. Next up is the refresh rate. So that's how often a new image is going to be updated on the screen. That gives you information more often. And last but not least, the response time. So that is how crisp and how clear and how up to date the image can be on the screen when the pixels are switching. So I talked a lot without actually delivering that recommendation that I promised. So what do you actually look for when you're buying a gaming monitor? Two different paths you can go down. So two, not four, two. Number one is if you're in it more for the cinematic experience, I really do recommend compromising on something like the response time. Get yourself a nice big monitor, get an IPS, VA, or PLS panel, and get that vibrance of the colors. Yeah, you're not gonna get the same, even input lag is often higher on those monitors, and you're not gonna get that same response time, and you're certainly not gonna get a monitor with a 120 hertz refresh rate, but the colors will make it look more cinematic and more story-like and more magical and all that kind of stuff. So I personally opt for that. I'm not a competitive gamer, however. If you are a competitive gamer and you're looking for every edge possible, then you need to carefully look into things like the response time of the monitor. That gives you that crispness. Look into the refresh rate of the monitor. That gives you the most up-to-date information. That gives you that as little latency as possible between moving the mouse and actually panning the camera. And last but not least, you want to look into the input lag of the monitor. This is one that can be pretty hard to find without reading reviews and doing all of your research. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCI Tech Tips, and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite retailer, NCIX.com.